Are you local? This is a local shop for local people, and it sells local things. If you're not local, then you should leave, because it means that you can't shop at this local shop. Hello and welcome to this Dungeon Fog video. My name is Guy and today we're looking at designing a complete village right from scratch all the way through. And we're going to design each of the buildings inside of that village so that when we present it to our players, not only do they have an overview of the village, but they can also go into any of the buildings within the village. Now, why would you want to do this for a specific village? And the answer actually isn't a specific village. You're going to be able to use this map that you create uh, along with me if you like that would be more beneficial I think for you but you're going to use this map basically whenever you need a go-to building so think of this as investing in your collection of maps after all one blacksmith is most likely to be laid out like another blacksmith and if you're like me and you use predominantly theater of the mind well then having a reference blacksmith map is a lot more useful uh, than sort of having to make it up on the fly on the other hand if you do use battle maps and the like well are your players going to be encountering blacksmith encounters that often no but if they do at least you'll have a map on hand so we are literally going to design the city i uh, the village of oath I've called it Oathly. Uh, you can call it whatever you like. It doesn't really matter. So the first thing that we're going to be doing in today's video anyway is designing the layout of the village. I think that's the most important. And we're going to be working in a semi-low magic setting. Uh, we're going to be building a fairly standard little village in an area that has fairly frequent raids by bandits or other deviants um, requiring the village to have a wooden wall around it. So that's our goal today is to get the layout of Oathly Village down so that next time we can then start to actually populate the buildings and start designing each of those buildings as we go. So it's going to be a bit of a ride but at the end of it you should walk away with a gigantic map of a village and a whole lot of buildings inside that you can use over and over again. Now uh, I think that's all that I need to say on that. Let's get started. So I've got Dungeon Fog open behind me, as you can see. Those of you who are familiar with it will immediately recognize uh, the standard sort of Dungeon Fog stuff. I'm going to just make our grid here a rectangle. And for ease of viewing and that sort of thing, I'm going to make the... Um, the grid really, 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 really small, something like that, I think works absolutely fine. I'm also going to make the grass. Uh, I don't mind that grass texture. It doesn't bother me. I can live with it. I'm going to do this, though, make it a little bit bigger, 200% scaling. You can't see that really clearly behind me, but I'm doing it anyway. And I'm going to drop down the color of the grass so that it's just a little bit, a little bit more grass-like, I think, anyway. So, so there we go. There's our grassy kind of texture. Uh, our grid can actually go softer now as a result of that because it's really the grid is there for reference it's not there to kind of get in the way okay so let's go and have a look at our layout now as i have prescribed in previous dungeon fog videos and actually any video i've ever made you should always work out the geography um before you start anything else so that's where we're going to start so we're going to come down to our paintbrush here actually we're not going to go to paint we're going to draw a shape because i think that gives us a little bit more um kind of control we can change that shape as well if we need to if we're finding things getting in the way i'm going to change my texture here i'm going to go to the color tab and i'm just going to make it let's do the river first i think there should be a river there's it's always nice to have a river rivers allow characters to swim away it allows for there to be a barge it allows there to be a river encounter which i think is is equally interesting um, so, so yeah, we're going to go with, with blue like that, and I just need to then go and um, go to the shape tool and do the shape. Okay, so there we are there. That's all good and well, and we're just going to close that down. All right, so uh, river. This is the full the full block that we're going to be working with. It's not a huge village as I as I indicated. So I think we're going to have the river. I'm going to hold down shift because shift allows me to not be uh, linked to the grid. So I can make a much more uh, organic kind of shape. We're going to have the river flow across the bottom of the map because it's not a, it's not a central feature of the map. I don't think um, it's it's just here to to remind us that there is 
a river that the characters can try and swim across. All right, so there is our river. I think it's a pretty good river, as a matter of fact. Okay, now we're going to change color, and we're going to start working in different elevational colors. Now, don't panic. Don't worry about the fact that these are different sort of shades and, and don't look necessarily realistic. If you really want to, if you really, 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 really want to, you can do something like this, and I'm going to show it to, to you. So instead of just using a flat color, uh, as we did with the river, we could come here, and let's say we're going to select grass with wild growing uh, green, green, wild growing gr grass. Uh, yeah, sure. Why not? Why not? Green, wild growing grass. We are going to uh, just increase its saturation so that it actually looks like grass. We're going to increase the lightness of it. Not too much. I'm looking for a color that's similar to our background color, but not hugely, hugely close to it. I'm going to make it 200 in size. So that we can actually see some grass detailing. And now we're going to go in and we're going to define some hills. Now, the river here bends inward, which in, in, in my mind anyway, inclines me to think that there is a little bit of a rise here. So what we're going to do is, again, I'm using the shift key so that I can make sure that I can create my own shapes uh, without sort of being constricted to the grid. I'm going to create what is causing the river to flow around it, which in this case is this hill. And the hill is going to extend out into a bit of a promontory and then close up uh, over there. So now we've got a hill over there. And then I think what would normally happen anyway, at least something that, 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 that uh, oftentimes was done, was that the walls that these, um, the village would use would have a raised mound of earth on the inside of those walls, as a matter of fact. So we're going to do something, well, we'll put the walls in first, I suppose, and then we can put the mound around them. Yes, okay, that's what we're gonna do. And then over here, because the river is here, that means the village is most likely gonna concentrate here and then sort of stretch around. Again, I'm just sort of talking as I work through it. They're gonna nestle against the base of this hill here, and it's gonna curve around in that kind of, of way and they probably choose a quite a flat plane to go with. All right, so I think that's fine for now. What we're going to do now is we're going to come back to our texture and we're going to lighten it up even more so that it is very, very bright. Uh, possibly play around with some of the tone there, uh, make it a little bit more obvious, I suppose, uh, something like that. And we're going to just put in the last piece of this hill, which is going to come in like this here and so we got a bit of a cliff face that's happening there if you've ever played around with contour lines in geography class or something along those lines you'll you'll know that we're just sort of layering up our hills so this is our third tier hill so nothing that's built on the ground floor should appear here uh, this is all raised above everything that's on here should be over the roofs of the little village that we are seeing so we can see that there's a nice and if we talk about these these rises as being 10 foot high each there's a 30 foot drop um well 10 20 yeah 30 foot drop down into the river there and there which makes for those dramatic hero exits which are always always quite fun now i think i think we're good to go i'm just going to for the sake of my own uh, liking just change this up so it's 200 percent um, and I'm going to do the same to this one. So it's 200%. Okay, great. So now we've, we're starting to get there. Now you see that these have got a black line around them. That's because they've got this outline preset selected. If I deselect the outline preset, notice the black line is gone. So now there's a bit of more of a blending going on. It depends on what you, on what you like. I'm going to take away that, but I'm going to add an inner shadow because the river obviously has a bit of a bank and it, it flows. That looks a little bit better. Let's make this water. Why not? We can. If we're going to go that route, there's no law saying that we can't, which I like. Uh, da -da 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 -da. I'm looking for water. Um, there is the water. Does this look like a river of, of water? It looks like sludge to me, my lord. I don't know what that is supposed to look like. Um, let's try this one. Oh, that's much better. Oh, leaps and bounds. Uh, I'm, I'm blown away by that. That that looks good to me because uh, the scaling is, is off. So, <laughs> so if we do that, 
Uh, oh, we have to press enter. There we are. There's a bit of a river. Then let's make it 300 so we can see. Oh, there's, oh there's, uh, a bit too much river. Uh, okay, let's try that one. No, let's try this one. Is it this kind of river? <laughs> that's too clean for me uh, personally, but uh, each to their own. There we go. That's a bit river like. And we can make it a little bit lighter and we can make it a little bit bluer too. Oh, that's purple now. Um, welcome to our purple river. The river is purple because it is a purple river. Um, all right, we can live with that. We can live with that. That's okay. That it, It's. It is river-like, and we don't need to go much further than that. We are still just plotting out our layout of our village. Okay, so now we're working on the ground plane. So first of all, I'm going to go to my layers, and I'm going to go to levels, and I'm just going to name this ground plane. For now, we can change it as we like as we go along, uh, which, which is absolutely marvellous. Okay, now, <clears throat> layout of a village. A village, which is a, a very French term for village, a village is usually based around a commodity of some kind. So in this case, we've got the river here with a nice defensible hill that they can put a guard post on top of to look out over this plane. So we've got the river over here, but they also usually are built where there is a road. Um, sometimes little farmsteads will settle and then around the farmstead, a few farm hands will build some houses and then suddenly someone goes, well, wouldn't it be a good idea if we set up a trading post? And then the trading post settles up and then a road kind of gets made from the farm out to the little nearby town that they keep going to and it gets busier and busier. And then another Another town over there gets connected and it's an organic process usually but once the town starts to get settled then things start to change so the big thing the main thing in my opinion as to what causes a, ro a, 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 a town or a village to exist must be the road that runs through it or that it has been built around or that has come up to it and is now part of it or whatever you want to call it the road is the critical thing so I'm going to make a road here uh, that we can then build our village around. Now, the thickness of this is pretty good, I think. The opacity is good. The softness, uh, I think we can just increase that up a little bit. Softness just makes it sort of softened around the edge, as is implied. So our road, I think we're going to have um, two roads coming out of this village. I think we're going to have... No, let's have three. Let's have three. So we're going to have one, which obviously is going to start here, and it's going to sort of work its way around, and then it's going to cut through the village because that's important, and it's going to go off sort of that that way. Okay, stop that. Um did it did it not draw did it not draw did i did i did i screw it up probably did it. all right so road road we're thinking road yeah all right through the village and then out that way there we go there we go we have a road now also in our main road so this is our main road our, our actual village roads will be a little bit narrower a little bit smaller if they even bothered with roads i think that because this is a major place i think that there would be another road coming off of here that slowly wins its way through the plains and the fields out that way. And I think that's going to give us quite a nice road. And then because there is this very dominating sort of hill rise that the people can get to, I feel that there would be a road coming from here and then winding its way along the track along and then it gets up onto this level oh so slow progress as it's got to make its way up to this level and then it arrives yay we've arrived at town and of course it's hidden underneath these because of my layering i think could quite possibly be my layering um if i drag this down there does it make a difference if i drag it down there does it make a difference no it just breaks everything um so that's okay i, I realize now i've got to be on this actual level in order to draw on the level so let's just go onto this level quickly uh, all right so we're on the level and we're going to start our road here and it winds up to there is it doing it? Is it doing it? Is it doing it? Is it doing it? No, it's not doing it. Okay, we'll add roads in later when I figure out how to do that. 
because clearly it's not happening, and I'm moving on, because that's what one does. So these crossroads now become the focal point of our village, because this is where all traffic and trade moving through our little town is going to take place, and that makes it the most important part of town, doesn't it? Um, and 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 rightly so, rightly so. I'm obsessed with getting this thing to work. Come on, just, just, just draw on top of it. No, no, still nothing. No, no, okay. And if I hide these, I bet you there's just this clump of road underneath. Yes, okay, well, that's fine. We'll come back to it. I'll figure it out when we get there. Uh, no, I know exactly what I'm going to do when we, when we get there. I do, I swear I do. Walls. Let's put in some walls quickly. Now, walls are usually, especially for this kind of village, we're going to have wooden walls. Uh, or maybe... Maybe not. Maybe we're going to have a stone wall. A, uh, well, not a stone wall. Let me rephrase. We're going to have stone towers. Now, the reason why I say it with such emphasis is that stone towers indicate that um, the town has achieved a certain level of of commercial viability that they can afford to pay for stone towers. So we're going to have a stone tower out here and I'm just going to use a one by one block to represent because remember this is just the layout of the town. This is not this is not anything more more than that. So we're going to have a stone tower at that gate entrance because it sort of shows, look at us, we have power, we have a stone tower. Uh, yes, and that is exactly how the sheriff of the town is going to, to talk when, when they arrive. This tower is our tower. It gives us great power and uh, it's pretty damn spiffy because they're the only stone structures in all of Oathley. No, that's not entirely true. There are others as well. All right, so we're going to put some towers here because the entrances are where you show your impressive wealth to locals and the like. It's important to, to do that. The river is, of course, um, a big a big potential threat. If enemies come across on this bank, they could possibly swim across. It is here, if we're working at 10 foot per block, um, it is here 30 foot wide. So that's uh, some systems it would be a swimming check. But what we're going to do is we're going to show that we really, I beg your pardon, we really appreciate our river, so we're going to put a stone tower there too. How bold, how daring to spend so much money on these wooden towers. I know it was a risk, but look at it. It showed off. We've got the beautiful makings of a rather nice little town. Now we're going to go to a wooden wall because, let's be honest, stone is expensive. It takes a long time, you know, and it's, it's just not likely to be used uh, a lot. Woods? Woods? No, 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 no. We don't want woods. We want actual wood. Natural wood? No, we don't want natural wood. We want worked wood. Okay, so our little towers are going to have, let's say, an old wooden floor to them, which we can... I think the darkness is okay. I think the saturation could come up just a little bit. Okay, so they're going to have a wooden floor and they're going to have, well, quite frankly, wooden walls. Because that's what you do. You, you 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 have wooden walls. It's just a thing. Now we've just got to connect it up. And the way that we do that is, again, we go back to what's practical. So if you think about the circumference wooden wall, which we now will be building around our little town, the important thing to realize is that your guards can run arguably 30 feet in a movement and then they can dash another 30 feet. So that's 60 feet to get from one tower to the other. And I think that's a pretty good call in terms of how to build these structures as well. Is if we plan on a wall section of about 50 foot in length, it means that a guard could run from one tower to the other and alert the guards. Now this is of course using the Dungeons and Dragons 5th edition movement uh, um, methodology. So we need to fix ourselves on something. It's not a bad thing to go on. 50 feet is not too far a distance to run and arguably you could do it in under six seconds. I couldn't, but some people who are trained in it probably could. Actually, if I was about to be attacked by thousands of orcs, I could probably do it and then die anyway. All right, so 50 feet. One, two, three, four, five. So we need a tower here. Uh, so we're going to plop a, a tower over here and I'm purposely not doing, 
I'm purposefully building them off center. So it's not on the same line. And the reason for that is manifold. Generally, though, uh, a straight wall is very susceptible to catapults and trebuchets. They slam into that wall and the whole wall goes down. If they have a slight angle to them, there's a chance that they actually bounce off. That's what they discovered in the later middle, middle uh, later medieval period. Uh, they often used to build circular walls as well, which I'm not doing here because, uh, well, I could certainly. Um, I just think that the square sort of shape will work a little bit better for our purposes. Um, so, so I'm purposely building it off shape to also give us an interesting shape for our our village here. All right, so one, two, three. Hang on, one two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so this tower is a little bit far away. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, I think that we could, I think we could make an argument that they would have put a wooden tower here. And so it's a nice easy run, one, two, three, to that stone tower there. Then we're gonna need to have a stone tower here at the base of the, the hill so that, um, you know, we can sort of watch for skullduggery. We will have a tower on the actual hill itself, but because this is the ground floor, we're not including it in this diagram. It doesn't get included. We assume that this level of hill here is beyond the reach of the players at this level. If we come down here, we go one, two, three, four, five, and we go there. Now, I would hope, and if you haven't started doing this by the time you, you start watching this video, I would hope that you would do it now, is open up your favorite map making program. It doesn't have to be Dungeon Fog. I just happen to think Dungeon Fog is the best that there is, and I have tried a lot of them, just in terms of ease and simplicity and, and sort of intuitive control. But whichever one you like to use, go ahead and use it. And I hope that you're drawing your own village as we go along. So it's a bit of a journey for both of us, and you're trying to work out the problems that you might have. Now we go one, two, three, four, five. So it's probably about here. I'm going to do it here and that's a nice neat little run one two three four to these stone towers here we've got this stone tower here so i don't think that they need a wooden tower here except that the river we have identified as being important so they're gonna have a, a wooden tower out here it is wood so they can they can they can make that manufacture that relatively easily all right so there we've got this sort of tower system in place i think that works quite nicely and i'm going to put in another tower just here that abuts out into the water because we can. So we've got our network of towers. This is going to be left open for the jetties and the keys and the wharves and things. And that generally will pose a problem. But we might, if our Lord has got a lot of cash, put some towers on this outer hill here as well. Again, it's just that prestige factor coming through. And, um, you know, it could be wood and then it gets overlaid with mud and then that gets painted white. So it looks like stone. It looks like it could be an important uh, structure. Meanwhile, it's only wood underneath, but no one needs to know that. Okay, then out here, we're not going to put anything on this side of the river because it's, let's say, foresty or swampy or unlikely to be attacked uh, to keep on the illy sort of uh, thing going on there. This is great. What it does, and immediately I'm looking at it, I'm going, okay, this is a bit of a long stretch, but this stretch here is particularly long between this upper tower up here and this lower tower down here. Yes, it would possibly be an oversight that we would sh possibly need to correct. On the other hand, it gives our players an opportunity to potentially sneak in here or sneak in here between these two towers if they need to sneak into town at all. And I think that's an important thing to bear in mind is that one needs to do these things in order to allow our players to, 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 to actually get into the town or sneak out of it if you're going to be using your town for that purpose. If it's just a town that they're based in, well, then they might still need to be able to sneak out, especially for those adventures when the sheriff has put them on lockdown because he's worried that they might be involved in uh, whatever it is that they're involved in. Yeah, 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 it happens. So that's something to, 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 to bear in mind. Okay, now we can put our walls in place. And um, I'm going to go from point here to point there and back again. And there we have a wall. We can change these reference points if we want to. If we want to sort of slide it up or slide it back down again, uh, depending on how we, we want this wall to look. I think we can change the thickness maybe uh, to four. 
and we can change the thickness here to two maybe there we go that's a bit of a better wooden wall now to me this is a great it, it, it's all that we need it's a little wooden structure it allows us to see oh yes um it definitely is doing its thing we can do that here as well oh did i not preset this uh oh, what a twit all right so let's take that and make that four and that two enter Okay, and then what I can do is this is the content, and there's the room. There are all the rooms, these are all the towers and things. So, all right, so that's absolutely fine for now. I mean, it's just this is just a reference, so it's helping us. If we then come over to here where we're going to have our gatehouse, this is a little bit more of a complicated structure. So I'm going to go from there to there, and then I'm going to build across like that so that we get this uh, overall shape so we can see that you've got to pass through there and that there is a room in there as well. Again, at this level, though, this is more of the layout of the map of the town. And um, I am very aware uh, and will be the first to admit that there are other programs out there that do do maps. Uh, you know, they do um, city maps and things, but really, is there something on the market that's phenomenally amazing? If there is, let me know uh, in terms of designing, in terms of designing uh, villages and things where there's an auto process. Now, I know that a lot of people will just go and use Photoshop. Nothing wrong with using Photoshop at all. Photoshop is a great tool and you kind of have preset buildings and things. Um, so, so yes, that is that is a way to go. But I'm not aware of a program that really allows you to use something as simple as this, where it's like, okay, click, 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 and we're done. I'm not aware of many, many uh, programs that, that exist that can allow you to do that. Uh, what I'm thinking here, I was thinking of doing that, but we're working in straight lines. So we're gonna go finish this off here. Okay, and once again, we have our gatehouse. This one's an easy one. Just like that. Then we come down here. Now, the purpose of this exercise is to create a complete village. So when we're done, uh, and I can't show you the final product. I wish I could because I haven't made it yet. I wanted the process to be, uh, I wanted you guys to see the process that I go through while I'm making it. Uh, like this wall was a, a mistake. It shouldn't be that. This should happen. It should go point, we said back point to back point. So um, I wanted you to be part of the journey to experience that and to go with me and build your own village at the same time. I think oftentimes what happens is that we get so caught up in planning everything else that when it comes down to drawing the maps, which I think is probably one of the most enjoyable parts of prepping for an adventure, we sometimes are not so motivated because we don't ha we haven't given ourselves enough time. So if you're watching the video and building a map at the same time, I think that might work better. Now here is a classic example of where the architect gets fired. How do I get into this tower? Well, you go outside and then you come round again. What a twit! Now why uh, should we take that into account? Well, yes, yes, we should. We should always be checking, going. Well, can you get into the tower? from the back of the castle from where you will be stationed yes or no and if the answer is no then you're in trouble all right so we're okay there we good there we've got our wall basically my lord i wish to inform you that we have completely ringed off the uh, entire perimeter 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 of the village um, we've got some skew walls, which I'm not too happy with. I am i can't handle this one. I'm going to knock it down, sir. I'm just, I'm knocking it down. I can't handle it. Can't handle it. I know we said base to base, but well, I just, I can't. I can't. It's weird. That's better. I feel more peaceful now. Thank you, sir, for letting me do that. Even if you didn't have much of a choice. I'm now going to come in here and go to my rooms, my rooms, and I'm going to relayer these because... I want my towers on top. Um, this is a bit of a, a process. So if you were smart, you would have done it. Uh, well, you can't do it the other way. Uh, so this is now I'm going north, e uh, north, south, um, north, east, south, west. Okay, so this is a north, east. So this is the eastern stone tower. 
Uh, you can't see what I'm doing because I'm typing it in uh, behind me. Um, Eastern Stone Tower. And the Eastern Stone Tower, I'm just going to take right to the right to the top. Great. Okay, so that puts it on top. So I've named it the Eastern Stone Tower. Why is it important to name these things? For me, the importance is that I will remember. So this is the Northeastern Stone Tower. It's important to do it so you can remember what the hell it was, and it gives you a bit of a naming convention as well, so that you can, and you'll see when, we, when we're when we working through building the rest of the town, that it's important to do that. Uh, sometimes you go, why did I, what was this building here? So this is now the Northwestern Tower, Northwestern Tower. And it doesn't take too long, if we're absolutely honest. And we are building this for multiple uses. Uh, if you think about it, this town, this generic town, you can use almost anywhere. Uh, what did I do? I double clicked. Okay, so we are here, which is now the north. This is the north tower. Because it's the only one there. Uh, north tower. Uh, I mean, we say tower, but let's be honest. It's going to be two stories, if that. Uh, if if that and then down here we have the western tower very very uh, unique names i would recommend by the way that when the pay, when the pcs enter this town is that if you just spend 5 minutes um going okay well the southwestern tower is actually called uh, bidim's tower and it was named after Lord Bidim, who uh, single-handedly caught a fish in the river whilst riding his horse. Uh, you know, it just adds a little flavour to the map that the next town they visit is that Bidim's Tower. Bidim's Tower? Don't be stupid. That's Lark's Tower. As in, that was when General Lark caught a fish single-handedly whilst riding on his horse. <laughs> Bidim's Tower. Yeah, right. Uh, we're going to call this River Tower. It should be called South Tower, but, well, River Tower, because it's on the river, isn't it? In it. Um, that's something that we got to we got to just work work with there. Okay, so I think all my wooden towers now... Wooden towers, I'm not going to go and rename. I am just going to move them up so that they're sitting above the walls. It just looks uh, aesthetically nicer. <laughs> Time to start working on the village itself after 40 minutes. Can you believe it? This is going to be a long one. The next ones won't be as long. I promise not to promise. Uh, we're going to, what we're going to realize is that a town crossroads, oftentimes what will happen is that it will evolve into more of a town square. Uh, square being the operative word. It was more of a just whatever shape they could sort of oozle out of of the local surroundings so i'm just going to sort of fill it in as best i can going okay that's that's a pretty i think organic shape for a town square it's quite a nice town square i think there's quite a lot of room in there and now we're going to start populating with actual buildings so i'm still sticking with this this wooden structure but what i'm going to do is i'm going to change the floor now to rooftop because uh, we are generating our layout map at the moment. And I'm looking here for thatched roof. Um, no, actually, yeah, thatched roof, thatched roof. Will it be a thatched roof? I think it's going to be a thatched roof. I think that makes the most sense. So we're going to go with a thatch uh, roof top, which I'm going to make a little bit lighter so that we can see it a little bit better. It looks a little bit more... Um, country village-esque if you like we'll go with that some buildings we can play around with the more important buildings we can play around with uh, certainly so all right let's get on with it so when you come into town what do you expect now oftentimes this is a question that I get asked hold that thought right this is a question that I get asked frequently is making up towns on the fly and then trying to remember what's been made up because that oftentimes is a problem. You're like, you're in town and um, 
Yeah, you 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 have stuff. There's a blacksmith. There's a grocer. There's a this. That doesn't really help drive things very much at all. I I personally don't think so. When you look at the layout of medieval towns, frequently what would happen is that you would have an inn fairly close to the main entrance uh, of the of the town itself. Now our little village here does not have a main entrance. It's not very big. If you look at it, it's 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100. So it's 100 feet there. So it's probably not a very big structure at all. It's maybe 60, 70 meters across, which is not huge. It's not a big space, but it's perfectly fine for our purposes here. We can change these blocks to 20 feet if we wanted to. 20 feet might actually be a little bit better. So then it's 300 feet across, so it's 100 meters. That's a pretty decent sized village uh, to have a wall around anyway. So, all right, what that means is, is that we won't have a tavern at each end we're probably going to have a tavern right here in the middle. Now, I like to start with the tavern because, well, quite frankly, that's where most people will go. And I know we've said thatch, but because it's a tavern, we want it to feel as if it's a little bit more, uh, a little bit more of a permanent structure. Now, a tavern usually will be built on the town square or next to the gate. In this case, if we build our tavern, say, here, we are then not only next to most of the gates, but we're also right on the town square, which is fantastic for the tavern owner. And so the tavern is going to be this fairly square shaped structure, uh, fairly box like. I'm not happy with that look. I like the roof, but I am not keen on the walls. So I'm going to do this and this and that and see what that looks like yeah, it's still not great let's do that then and that then and then we get that and we go yes okay so there is a potential roof for our tavern now the scaling in this case is now wrong there we go that's much better I think that looks a little bit more tavern-like. Taverns, however, don't just come with um, nice little shingled roofs and 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 that sort of thing. They come with more than just that. They usually come with a back entrance or a back side, if you like, which we're going to drop in over here. Uh, there we go. And we're going to have to just... Actually, I'm going to leave it like that. I think I quite like that stone, that sort of wooden wall around it to almost indicate that it's a double storied structure. And I'm going to actually change the balance of it. I'm going to do th this. Because I think this looks to me more like a double story tavern. So the front half of the tavern here is actually not that, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's a nice little sort of entrance way. Then there's the actual tavern itself, which may in this case be a double story tavern. We, we don't know yet. Then taverns, not frequently, but always because you've got people who arrive on horseback. So they're going to have, quite naturally, I think, quite rightly so, they're going to have stables attached to them. Again, it's just logic. It's just logic. So stable yards, oftentimes there would be a little bit of an entrance way and then the stable yard would be in an L shape. So we're going to try and figure out the L shape in our space here. And I think what we end up doing is something along these lines. So we're going to go in there, 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 and then out the back here, we would have our, our little stable yard. So, so there is our stable yard for, for lack of a, a better descriptor. And then we can see that we can finish off that stable yard by putting in that little triangle there so that when it's raining, you can get to your horse and still, you know, get to the end. So that's quite nice, I think. We're also going to put out a little uh, structure uh, off of the stone wall itself which the tavern keeper built, now not necessarily legally, admittedly, admittedly, it wasn't totally legal, but uh, he he knows some people. He has some friends that um, he spoke to and kind of got, got not permission to do it, but he, he was allowed to do it. He, he, pay, he bribed the guards. Uh, and what I'm looking for now is... Uh, Wood, 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 wood. He'd probably use. Uh, wait, these are still tiles. Where, is it? where, where? There we go. Here we go. Uh, wood. Okay. He would probably uh, have walled off from there to there and back again. 
Uh, Hobbit story. Are we are we having our walls disappear again? Did I did I do that incorrectly? Oh, because the thickness is zero. Uh, <laughs> so I think it's there. Is it there? No. Okay. So we're gonna make this one, and we make that one, so we can actually see it when we create it, and back again. Okay. So he's built a little wall in there. And then he's probably going to have done the same here. Um, here, I think, is probably better. Less chance to interrupt the guards, folk, and the like. Now, that wall is definitely going to have just a passageway in it. I don't think it would be anything more than that. Um, did it put it in? Did it put it in? Did it? Did it? Did it? Otherwise I'll have to go with a door. Which I can do. It's the only problem with going on double double tracks backwards and forwards is it sometimes confuses it. Can we put in a door? Let's see. Yes, but it's a gigantic door for our scale. So I'm not too excited about doing that. Now I'm gonna leave it. I'm gonna leave it. We'll 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 remember that there's doors. We're not building the entire layout of the tavern just yet. Okay, so here is our tavern. What we must do, what we must do is come to rooms. And we have to select this room here, uh, wherever it might be. We're going to call this, this is stables. And then this is, oops, this is tavern, tavern one. Naming of taverns. Oftentimes when, I, when my players arrive in town, I will say to them, what's the name of the tavern that you're going to? And they will then say, oh, it's the Laughing Skull or it's the um, Dead Lizard. They can come up with names and it often makes it quite fun for them. It, sometimes you could argue it breaks you away from, from the role play, but uh, I, don't, I don't think so, personally. I think it's it's just a nice little touch, and then they feel as if it's their own village. Uh, you do have to write it down though, and say, uh, yeah, it's yeah, yeah, absolutely, that's what it's called, and I remember that because I wrote it down. You must write down the name that they give it. There's no getting away from that. Uh, okay, I'm just going to quickly um, fill in this area here. I'm going to change the opacity now and the softness. I'm going to increase so that when I do this, it just makes that a little bit more of color makes it feel like it's a bit more of a used space and of course they would come in off of the main road into there and there might be a little bit of a pathway there i'm not sure we'll, we'll come back to that okay so we have our very first building we have our tavern uh, which has got its own little sort of walls attached to it And some secret walls too, because of the way that I built it by not remembering to do the thing. We have our tavern. Let's pull out and have a look-see at our village. It's coming along. It's really coming along. Now, oftentimes, and I forgot to mention this, oftentimes villages would spring up around crossroads. You might get the tavern having happened first, and then something else happened, someone else arrived, someone, a blacksmith put up shop, and the village sprung up based off of that. That is entirely a possible um, creation method for a village as well. And then they put the wall around that. So you can kind of go whichever way you like. And I was speaking of blacksmiths, and so blacksmiths is what we should put in next. The blacksmith in the medieval setting was the not the most important, but one of the most important structures. Uh, in the town because they're going to be fixing everything from plows to uh, roof uh, sh uh, nails nails they're going to be making as well so we're going to give this blacksmith a little bit of a fancy structure uh, here as we plot him out now what i'm going to do is we're going to no not not start there so you're coming in off of this road very nice thank you very much and i think we're going to put the blacksmith here in this this space here and that's why we kind of have this this bizarre shape happening and i'm going to do that and he comes right up onto the edge of this this um hill here very strange shape for a 
building. Yes, we're going to curve some of these walls now. That's what I wanted to do. So we, uh, uh, I'm going to deselect that. Uh, we select the wall. And we say advanced. And then uh, we've got our various shapes and things there. So that's not a problem. Uh, that's our wall point. We could move this. Uh, I don't want to do that. I don't want to do that. Right. blank. I hate it when I do that. But usually when you select the wall, that's an unusual sound. It shouldn't have played that sound. I don't know where that sound comes from anyway. Um, usually when you select the wall, you can divide the wall, but it's not allowing me to do that because the wall's thickness is set to zero, you pillock. Uh, so let's do this. Now we can select the wall. Twit. Uh, and we're gonna make it curved. So there we go. Except that's the wrong wall. <laughs> that's not the wall I wanted to work with. All right, uh, the wall I wanted to work with was actually this wall here. I wanted this wall to be curved, not that curved. I just want it to have a slight bend to it, to to indicate this is where the forge area is going to be. I think that makes for a more interesting kind of building. This roof tile does nothing for me. Uh, let's see if we've got something better. It's very clean. That's better. And we're going to change its scale. So it's something more like that, I think. You know, we can we can play. We can really play around if we want to. Um, that's not the purpose of this video you can make it look as nice as you like you can come in here and put torch lights on the roads if you very very well like to if i can now go back to being zero there we go we've got our blacksmith area we've got our tavern and this is now labeled blacksmith as well that's the important thing if you ask me is so that we can quickly identify what that space or shape is supposed to be uh, what's this? Oh, these are the little in intervening walls. All right, so we've got a blacksmith. Then we need a market, someone who's going to be doing some kind of trading, um, selling wares, the usual kind of thing. The bane of um, role players everywhere is, uh, or GMs, I should say, is the dreaded shopping event. The market in this case, we're going to say, is actually quite a long market. And uh, it's going to pop in here and come down there. And we're going to just take it in. Now oh, we're going to follow the road. We'll take it in there. OK, great. We'll close it up because, again, what I think is that the market will have. I'm just going to change the rotation of this. The market is going to have a uh, wrong way. Let's make it 270. The market is going to have um, a thatched area as well. Thatch is cheaper than tiles. And I think that's that to me makes sense. So the, this is the front area. This is the area that the, the players' characters would arguably interact with. They can buy and barter and, and trade. Then we're going to have the actual warehouse of the market, I think, where they keep all their general goods and, and the like. And obviously where our players will be able to go in and rob them blind, uh, effectively, is, is the idea that we're going for here. And then we can just put in a wall. We just have to make sure its thickness is actually there so we can see it. And this wall, I think, is just going to be like that. Nothing complicated, nothing overly suggestive, just there. 
so that we know that it's it's there's a little quad in here and again we're going to just paint this in da, 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 da. all right and that's the market access you know the little access road if you want to 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 go into the back of the market so there's our market i think that they would also quite possibly uh, no, maybe not. Maybe not. Maybe not. I was going to say quite possibly trade out of the back of the store as well, but they they right next to this hill. I don't think they'll get, there's going to be any illegal um, trading going on there. Uh, right. So blacksmith market and tavern main main kind of of um, structures that you'll generally find. The next set of structures that sometimes you'll find in a village. And something that is maybe overlooked from time to time. We're going to come down to the docks later on in, in another video because I think we're getting quite long in the tooth here. But another kind of structure that you will find is either an apothecary, a church, or a trader who is not like the 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 goods trader here who's trading in sacks of flour, uh, daily commodities, but someone who buys furs from the local outlying region someone who maybe buys gold, all those kinds of wonderful things. So first first things first, we're going to put in an apothecary. I The apothecary doesn't strike me as having vast sums of money to do things, but I want them to look slightly different. I want them to look a little bit different from everywhere else. And the apothecary, because of their explosive nature and the fact that they, they can sometimes be quite dangerous, the law has relegated that they actually come down here. And so they've built their little their little structure in here. In case of fire, the river is right nearby. They can they can put the fire out quite easily. Not a problem. Uh, so they can put the fire out if they need to. Uh, do, are we happy with that? Is that the direction we wanted to go in? Do we want it to go in this direction? Uh, 189. Uh, we can, you can, like I said, you can play around. But we've now got, and we need to name it, we've now got our apothecary. Apothecary, apothecary. However you spell apothecary, apothecary. So there's our apothecary down there again. And this is something that is important when designing designing your villages. How do they get from their structure to a road? Uh, so firstly, we're going to have our little pathway that our guards take around the back here. They're going to have this. This this is definitely a path that they're going to take to, to get there. We're going to have a path around this way because it makes sense that our guards kind of go on a patrol around the walls. Our apothecary can then just join up here. They can just join up in there. We're going to give them a little bit of green space so they've got, you know, they've got some room to to do whatever it is they need to do. And now we've got room here for a, a little structure. Uh, we were talking about a church that needs to to be plonked down. Generally speaking, churches like to have the most favourable uh, spaces. They like to be very prominent to give hope to the community. In a role-playing situation, frequently you have multiple deities, don't you? So how many shrines you have is entirely up to you. I'm going to drop down the church here. I think it's going to be this massively imposing structure, uh, which is going to go to there and there and there and there. Bang. There is our church nice and proud i'm not going to make it in a cross shape because that's not necessarily what my world's religions look at it as what i am going to do is come in here though and i'm going to rotate this 90 degrees so we get that that feel i think that works a little bit better maybe i don't know we'll we'll we'll, we'll think about it so there's our church and of course we're going to have to have our main entrance way into the church very nice. Thank you very much. So we've got our church entrances just there. That means they could have a nice little, um, I don't know, there could be a, a, a well here or market stalls run by the church where they sell their honey. I'm not sure. What it does do for us is it creates this space here. And I think this space here, as macabre as it might be for the villagers to have, uh, to have this here, is we are going to create the graveyard. 
of doom. We don't want defilers and other monsters to get hold of our dead, so we create a graveyard. And I'm just going to very quickly fill this in so that it's got a different sort of tone to it. There we are, and put a little pathway down the middle. And so that I remember that it's a graveyard, I'm actually going to come here. And where are we now? We're on fantasy. So I think there were tombstones. It's just a case of recalling where. Again, it's entirely up to you how much effort you want to put on this map and how long you take to do it. But as I said, this is something that you're going to be using frequently. So once you've got, oh, let's put the well, let's put the well in town. Uh, control to shrink it down. So usually there is a town well that they put at the center. They do have the river, which is quite nice. Um, right, so we can we can drop in an open grave. There are tombstones somewhere, and this is something that we we can go through. And I can I can go through this with you if you if you if you want me to. Um, it's not a problem. So we're going to load in a few gravestones here and there. And generally you find at the back is where the old eldest oldest gravestones are uh, and they're usually broken. So uh, and and to give you an idea, I mean we can we can populate this this now quite nicely to to look like a little village uh, once we're done. So the initial look might be oh it doesn't look so so grand until you start then putting in all the little extra bits and pieces, which I think really will start to make it come alive and to feel like it's this functioning little village. Um, so we're going to put this little cart, maybe not there because that feels weird, uh, but it is a merchant's cart, so so maybe it's parked here. You see, so so once again, one can can fill it up as you as you so so choose and so like to to really make it feel a lot a lot more like a village uh, right okay enough of that uh, the only other thing I want to do is go to Victorian because they had some nice tombstones as well and more importantly they had tomb statues which I thought were quite groovy so if we put in like a, a statue there and and um, a broken statue maybe here and maybe another one well again we can play with it and I'll, I'm going to get lost doing this I really am going to get lost doing this so I'm not going to carry on much more I do just want to put some gargoyles on the church because I like gargoyles and it, it makes it a little bit more church like I think anyway here we go. We have gargoyles, downspouts on our church. Back to building our village. Let's have a look at our village now uh, as we're getting there. And I think that's looking pretty good, as a matter of fact. This grid is still, it's really overpowering. Uh, I'm going to drop it down even more uh, so we can we can get a sense of our, of our little village taking place. So we've now got an apothecary. We've got a church. We've got a blacksmith. We have a general trader. Like I said, we're going to now get to the point where we then have someone who takes in the furs of the surrounding areas. We might, and I don't think we do, need a tax collector. They will probably be in the actual structure itself. So the rest of this little place is going to get filled up with little houses, perhaps. Perhaps we're going to put in another, another tavern, um, maybe down by the docks. There might be a, a, a more raucous -y kind of tavern. But generally speaking, we're getting there. And, and once we're done, I mean, we've been going now for an hour. But once we're done, we will finish up with this amazing layout of a, of a town. And then we can then translate that into maps of each of the areas so that we then have this really powerful resource at our command to just pull out a map and say, right, well, this is the standard layout of a temple or this is the standard layout of a tavern. I don't need to overthink it too much. I don't need to get flummoxed by what I do or don't have access to. And it's got a little side entrance here. So a little bit of thought here allows us to do a lot more later on and elsewhere. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this video and have been creating your own map as we've been going so that you understand the processes and the ideology behind building 
a village of your own so that you can then use it wherever you like. Until next time, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button if you want to see more of these videos and if you want to support the channel. I do have to say thank you to all of our patrons who make these videos possible in the first place. They really do. So watch out for all of their names at the end of this video. Give them some love too. Uh, they are, after all, what makes this possible. Until next time, I wish you and yours the happiest of map making.